ಓಂ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣಾಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಾಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ರಮನಾಯ ಈಷಜೀವೈಷಧೀ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈಷಧಿ ನಾಟ್ ವಿಷಧಿ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರಿಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹಟ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋಟ್ ವಿಷ ಹಿಯರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೈಷ ವೈಷ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಸಿಡ್ರಸ್ ಸತ್ಸ್ವಭಾವತೋ ವಸ್ತು ಕೇವಲ ಸೀ ಭಿದ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸಪರೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ ಓಕೆ ದನ್ನ ದಿ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಅಂಡ್ ಜೀವ ಈಶ ಜೀವಯೋ ಈಶ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಒನ್ ಹು ಕಮ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಶ ಈಶ ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯ ಇಶ ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯ ದಲಿತ ಧಾತು ಈಶ ನಾಟ್ ಇಶ ಇಶ ಇಚ್ಛಾಯ ಈಶ ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯ ದಲಿತ ಧಾತು ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಲಾರ್ ಶಿಪ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಒನ್ ಹು ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಶಾ ವಾಸ್ಯೋಪನಿಷತ್ ಈಶಾ ವಾಸ್ಯವಿದ ಸರ್ವ ಸೊ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಶ ಈಶ ಆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಸಫಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಈಶ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಶ್ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಏಕವಚನ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಈಟ್ ಈಟ್ ಈಶೋ ಈಶ ತೃತೀಯ ಏಕವಚನ ಈಶ ಈಟ್ ಭ್ಯಾಂ ಈಟ್ ಭೇ ದಲಿತ ಶಬ್ದ ಸೊ ಈಶ ವಾಸ್ಯಮಿದ ಸರ್ವ ದಲಿತ ತೃತೀಯ ಏಕವಚನ ಈಶ ವಾಸ್ಯೋಪನಿಷ ಸೊ ಸೇಮ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಶ ಇದು ಸಮಾಸ ಈಶ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಈಶ ಜೀವಯೋ ಈಶಶ್ಚ ಜೀವಶ್ಚ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಶಕಾರಾಂತ ಶಬ್ದ ಈಶ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಕಾರಾಂತ ಶಬ್ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಶ ದಿ ಕಮ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಶ ಓಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಜೀವ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ so the one who commands and controls all is isha okay so uh, uh, normally translated as god suppose uh, you find or you discover that the real you commands and controls all suppose then you are the, that god that was okay then how come this sense of division has come? how come you have that everywhere that there is this sense of division rules the rules only a few people are advaitis most of them are advaitis in the advaitis there are many categories in india itself there are dvaitis who are proclaimed dvaitis we are dvaitis whereas advaita is blasphemy okay and they are proclaimed dvaitis and therefore for them any even the idea of oneness between isha and jiva is anathema it is blasphemous why jesus christ was crucified do you ever think about it why was he crucified so in india everybody was saying what jesus christ said only nobody was crucified they were abused and there were a lot of arguments and all that and sometimes punished also but not crucified okay so jesus christ was crucified because the complaint against him to pilate was he says he is the king that is the complaint okay then a uh, pilate asks him to please check these details i may not be entirely rigorous in my details pilate's wife tells him he looks like a good man be careful with him you should not end up punishing a good man 
My dear Swami, but where is the sin? He said, it is not in my hands. It is, I am not concerned with it. He is a Roman governor. For the Roman, in the Roman rule, the law is the most important thing, like in America. You cannot violate law. Not like in India. In India you can violate law left and right. Not an issue. We don't care so much for law. We care for dharma, not for law. Okay? Therefore, uh, but uh, Roman, uh, this, this came from Roman, Roman uh, uh, kingdom, uh, that, uh, that vasana, that you have to be lawful, you have to follow law. And you cannot violate the law. If you violate the law, you will be severely punished. The same spirit continues even today in uh, Western societies. Only punishments were uh, in medieval period very harsh, now punishments are more uh, gentle. Otherwise the law is the same. The law is uh, that you cannot evade taxes, you have to pay taxes. And uh, so the, in the temple also the problem came about taxes only. Uh, so uh, Jesus Christ had uh, an issue with the law, government, uh, that is the Roman government, about taxes. He advises them, don't pay tax, you need not pay taxes, something like that. Already he was in the, looks, uh, the government has uh, his eyes, their eyes upon him because he is uh, instigating people to violate the law. That was the background. So he was uh, brought before the Pilate. And these people complained to Pilate, the temple priests. It is a temple and priests, that is what it is. And they complained, he says he is the king. That the government cannot accept. King is Caesar, not he. And uh, that is against the law, proclaiming yourself to be the king is sedition. That has to be punished. Pilate asks him, hey, who are you? You claim to be the king? Then Jesus Christ should have said, no, I don't, I'm not a king. I am an ordinary, he seems mortal. Then he will be left alone. But he said, yes, I am the king in the kingdom of heaven. That is what he said. That is Ahmad Mahasri. That is the point I am saying. Therefore, I am not a king in your kingdom. I am not like any other subject in your kingdom, but when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, I am the king. The son and father are one. That is what he said. These are his words. That is Advaita. And he was uh, crucified not because of his uh, philosophical vision of Advaita. He was crucified because what he is saying uh, somehow is misinterpreted or misconstrued as a violation of the Roman law. That's why he was crucified. Pilate washed his hands and handed over to the mob and they crucified him. Why I told all this story? Because Jesus Christ was a Radvaiti. That's why. He was not preaching division. He was saying, you are the, I am the king in the kingdom of heaven. So Buddha was teaching uh, Advaita. Buddha is said, uh, I, I, I know I am not Buddha. Every one of you is a Buddha. Only the Buddha must be awakened. The one who, awake, uh, who wakes up to the truth inside is the Buddha. There is a Buddha in every one of you. Even Saint Paul said, there is a Christ in every heart. Now what about Jiva? Jiva is a myth. Jiva is mythical. The Christ is the real. So what is called Buddha, what is called Christ, is the Brahman, Tattva Okay? Therefore, the, you, you are the Brahman. No, no, Ishvara controls and commands everything. Suppose you understand that you are the one who controls and commands everything. Then what is it that stops you? to realize your Swarupa as Ishvara. So you are conditioned to think that you are small. 
you are not small, your Vesha is small. Vesha Dhi, Dhi is a thinking. You think of yourself in terms of the attire that you wear. And that creates a bhida division. What is the attire that you have? Jiva. Jiva is the attire. You put on the attire of a jiva and uh, impute the attire of Isha to the other. The other is the Isha attire. Other is the Isha, I am the Jiva. This Isha and Jiva are nothing but the Vesha, the attire, and the identification with the attire, Dhi, that creates Bhida. Okay? So, Vesha Upadhihi, Tasya Dhihi Bhranti Pratyayaha, the Tekaka. Therefore, you have a thinking that you are the Vesha, the attire, and that, that attire in your thinking is the Jiva attire, and you have a condition that Ishwara has a different attire, and therefore you created two attires. You know attire? Mm -hmm. You created two attires, and uh, thereby as long as you look at yourself in terms of one attire, and Ishwara in terms of the other attire, the thinking, Dhi. The thinking is not truthful. It is a delusion. It is wrong thinking. Because of that wrong thinking, Dhi is the thinking which is wrong. And uh, because of that thinking which is, uh, which is uh, wrong, there seems to be a division. Okay? I was saying uh, there are the proclaimed Dvaitis. Jesus Christ is not a proclaimed Dvaiti. Vatican is a proclaimed Dvaiti. Vatican proclaimed that you are all sinners. Jesus Christ did not say you are all sinners. Vatican said that you are all sinners. And God has a, uh, God's son came. And so they created the division of God, Son, and the Jiva. Jiva they call Holy Ghost. So this is the Trinity. Trinity is not uh, taught by Christ. If you see Bible, there is, you don't hear the word Trinity. Bible is uh, in Bodhi. It is in spoken language. It is not in the language of uh, theology. Trinity, God, all these Holy Ghost, these words you don't find in Bible's uh, words. They are not Bible's words. They are the, that is the language of the theology that came after the Bible. Bible itself came after 300 to 350 years after Jesus Christ. December 25 is a provision or is a, con a consensus that it must be the date of his birth. It was a consensus and that became fixed. Okay? So now the Vatican is a Dvaita. The Christianity is a Dvaita. Not what Jesus Christ taught. Okay? Then come to India. There are the people who have, who are proclaimed Dvaitans. Please come. Like in Madhva Sampradaya, they are Dvaitans. Okay? Then, uh, God is different and Ishwara, Jiva is different. They are two different things. Okay? Karana Kadya Bheda. Karana is the God, Kadya is the Jiva, they are separate. Karana Kadya Bheda. Like Nayayikas and Vaisheshikas. That's why in Madhva Sampradaya they study a lot of Nyaya, Indian logic. Because this is Dvaita, they are also given to Dvaita. They proclaim Dvaitins. They say we are Dvaitins. And the Isha and Jiva are separate. Really, really, so essentially separate. Not based on Vaisha or any such thing. Then, there are another group of people who follow Dvaita Advaita. So what they say, 
they do not talk of karana karya, they talk of visheshana visheshya. Visheshana is the jiva, and visheshya is the ishvara. There is advaita in visheshya, and advaita in visheshana. This is the dvaita advaita. Both are there. Visheshana is the jivas. Jivas are the visheshana. Jivas are many, and they are attributes of God. Whatever that means. So, that doesn't sound very nice or convincing, but that is how they say, more or less, that is what they say. Jivas are all visheshana to Ishvara. Chita chit visheshta Ishvara. Chit is jiva, achit is jada jagat, both are visheshana for Ishvara. Ishvara becomes visheshya. There is dvaitam in the chita chit, means jiva jagat, there is a dvaitam. But in visheshya, there is no dvaitam, it is advaita. Therefore, it is dvaita and advaita at the same time. They are the dvaita advaita people. Theoretically, they are dvaita advaita people. But in practice, they are hundred percent advaitis. Hundred percent advaitis. To the point that there is no advaita, even before, even between Lord Vishnu and his consort, there is no advaita. Lord Vishnu is separate, his consort is separate. Some separations, they, they admit. They won't say both are one and the same. Shiva and Shakti are one and the same. Like that some people say, they don't say that. So Vishnu and Lakshmi, they are, there is a separation. They are together, but there is a separation. Dvaita, Dvaita, that is how they say. Therefore, they are proclaimed as Dvaita, Dvaitis, but in practice they are hundred percent Dvaitis in India. Then come to Shankara, Shankara, Shankara followers. They are proclaimed Advaitis, but the Pakka Advaitis in day to day in their, in their situation. Pakka Advaitis. Amazing. This is the world. And a person like me feels like fish out of water in this kind of mixed up situation. So they don't have that integrity or honesty. So they have, uh, they, they, they are like, uh, uh, what they call chameleon? Is there such an animal? Yes. Is it called chameleon? Yes. Chameleon. It changes colors. So the person becomes Advaiti in one context and suddenly he becomes Advaiti in another context. How can they do that? I, I cannot uh, work it out. Ramana Maharshi is not a Dvaiti, he is a Dvaiti. And after he left the body, people must have introduced some Dvaita into Ramana Ashrama also, put a temple, this and that. But Ravana Maharshi was not a Dvaiti. He was Pakka Dvaiti. Even in his time, all the Mathas, Shankar Mathas, etc., they are proclaimed Advaitis, but in practice they were Dvaitis only. Even in his time. So, very amazing how the corruption takes over the systems. So, therefore, if you, are, if you are honest and if you are sincere in your understanding, then whatever difference, Bhida, you see between Ishvara and Jiva is entirely due to a wrong notion caused by identification with the attire. That is the word. Isha Jeeva Yoho Vesha Dheeva Okay? You say it from the, from the backwards, the division, because of the wrong notion, due to identification with the attire of Ishwara to Jeeva. That is Isha Jeeva Yoho Vesha Bhida. Here, Vesha in the attire means not shirt and pant, not that. The attire is, Isha attire is Sarvajna Sarvashikti, that is Isha attire. Jiva attire is Kinchijna 
किंचित क्षेत्र दट इज जे वर्ट है ईश्वर है नॉल नॉलेज नॉल पॉवर जीवा हैज लिटिल ए लिटिल नॉलेज एंड ए लिटिल पॉवर बट यू यू कैन सी ऑलरेडी द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ अद्वैत अदर सो इट इज ऑल अबाउट ऑल वर्सेस स्मॉल ऑल इज ईश्वर स्मॉल इज जीवा दर इज दर इज दी डिविजन नाव दिस ऑल वर्सेस स्मॉल this division one is big and another is small is it essential or is it caused by an event that is the question okay if it is essential then the division is pakka you cannot change it but if it is caused by an event not essential but an event which is vesha then when the vesha is taken into account there is division And when you take away the vesha, there is no division; it becomes one. That is how, when you say sarvanya ha ishvara ha kinchi nyo jiva ha, there the difference is between sarva and kinchi. Nyo is same. Therefore, there is an element of division because of sarva and kinchi. But it could be one because of the same nyo. Nyo is changing. So this is how. You take the upadhi into account. You experience division. If you can raise a more the upadhi, you experience the oneness. Okay. So that is the mechanism. What is jiva? I told you what is ishvara. But what is jiva? Jiva. You see, this is again one misconception that is very prevalent among the students of Vedanta. If it is prevalent in the outside world, how can I complain about it? I don't have a complaint. I have a complaint only when the students of Vedanta make a mistake. Not just a mistake; it is a serious, deep-seated misapprehension of a truth. And that is, uh, you consider yourself to be a jiva. You take yourself to be a jiva, okay? And you are sure that you are a jiva. And why why you take yourself to be a jiva? Because you were born and you are going to die. And after death again you will be born. And before born you were you were dead earlier. So there were earlier births, there will be later births, and you are in the present birth. That is how you look at yourself. Now you are jiva for that reason. That is how the word jiva is understood. They are not the students. They consider that as Vedanta. That is not Vedanta. Okay, that is a model meant to explain a given situation. It is not the truth. It is a model meant to explain a fact of life. Fact of life is different from the truth. Okay. So, therefore, the jiva is taken as that. But the jiva has nothing to do with that. The word jiva, if you observe the word carefully, the way it is used by Shankara, you can clearly see that it is not about earlier birth, this birth, later birth. That is not jiva. It is not about birth and death at all. It is about jiva prana dharma. It is about that. Prana is bahuvachana. Prana nam dharma. Prana sar indriyas eleven. Those eleven indriyas. Are held together in this body. The body is this scaffold. What is body? If you go to a doctor's office in the earlier days, they used to hang the one skeleton there, one skeleton, regular skeleton, original skeleton. So they purchase that skeleton. It is sold, and bodies are given to medical college for research purposes. Finally, the body has to be disposed. They take out the skeleton and keep it, or maybe they make some plastic skeleton based on that model. Whatever it is, you enter into a doctor's office. They use to a skeleton. Nowadays, it is not there. Nowadays, you do not know that it is a hospital. It looks like a hotel, small hotel. It doesn't look like a hospital. In India, if you go to some of these corporate hospitals, 
you will uh, think that you are in a hotel, not in a hospital. Very interesting. So when you enter in a doctor's office, there is a skeleton. This skeleton will be covered with flesh and the flesh is uh, further uh, sewn in, sewing, you know, it is sewn with a, with a lot of uh, uh, skin. That is, a, that is a, the, the scaffold. And within that scaffold, eleven functions are held together. Five jnana indriyas, five karma indriyas and one inner arca. These are there in between that scaffold. Who is keeping all these seven in that scaffold? The scaffold is keeping? No. There is an element which keeps all these seven, eleven indriyas within this body. That element, that chaitanyam, that awareness of absolute, that is called jiva. Why should we call jiva? In the context of the body, that chaitanyam holds all the eleven organs in this body together. That's why it is called jiva. Jiva, pranadharane. Okay? It is like, what is it? that makes that bulb shine, electricity. How? The electricity enters into the bulb, passes through the filament and completes the circuits, circuit and makes it shine. That is the electricity. Now the bulb may be small, but that smallness doesn't belong to electricity. Okay? The bulb may be thousand a candle bulb, the bigness also doesn't belong to electricity. The smallness also doesn't belong to electricity. The bigness of the bulb and the smallness of the bulb, neither is of the electricity. Is electricity small or big? It is neither. Okay? Is the space small or big? Neither. The Ghatakasha is small, Mathakasha is big, Mahakasha is even bigger. But space in itself is neither small nor big. Therefore, you wrongly connect the smallness and bigness to the space. Space doesn't have that uh, character. It is neither small nor big, because it is space. Small is within space. Big is within space. So smallness and bigness are defined for things which are contained within the space. And therefore the words smallness and bigness do not apply to the space. And if you apply, you are deluded. That is the problem. Okay? Now, Isha and Jiva. Isha is the God. All-knowing and all-powerful God. Is He Jada or Chetana? What kind of God uh, you have? Because uh, Sankhya people, they wanted a Jada God. They, instead of calling God, they call uh, the most important, Radhan, the most important. It is another name for God only. So God is the most important, you know, Jeevodi God. But they call it the most important, Radhan. And the uh, only thing is, the Pradhana is insentient, Jada. It is not sentient. Jada. Okay? There is no sentient element which is most important. There is, that means there is no God. For Sanchas, there is no God. There are sentient beings, many, who are all small and separate. And this Pradhana, it modifies itself to become the Jada. And therefore it is the most important. Therefore now the Sanchas God, he is the Jada God it is, insentient God. In fact, you should not call it God, because God implies a sentient being. God doesn't imply lifeless thing. God implies a sentient being. Somehow, the temple people, the temple priests, it is not about one priest or the other priest, it is about the priest craft. When sir, the priest class, the ancient times onwards it is coming like that. They somehow felt, they must have felt 
God must be sentient, right? But the God that we are worshipping is not sentient, it is Jada. You worship a piece of stone, huh? of course with some features, some features came later. Initially there were no features. At the Shankara's time there were no features. Salandrama Shilaya Vishnu Bhuttihi. Salandrama Shila, it is a piece of stone with a, without any features. That is worshipped as Vishnu. Okay? Then features came, hands, legs, face, like a human shape that came later. So that piece of stone is Vishnu. After it take the features also, uh, an idol is the God. That is how the worship came. But uh, if you don't ask any question, uh, but still the question must be lingering somewhere inside. If not for everybody, at least once in a lifetime a question may come. How come the God, uh, it must be a knowing element, uh, a piece of stone, jada, how can it be a knowing element? Therefore, this problem they must have faced. That's why they, the ritualist has a tendency, he offers a, a ritual as a solution for every problem. That's why he is a ritualist. Eh? So, you go to an Ayurveda doctor, eh? There is no specialization in Ayurveda. If you have eye problem, he will give a medicine for the eye. If you have problem for the ears, he will give a medicine for the ear. In any case, Ayurveda is not supposed to act immediately. You have to take it daily, twice, and uh, six months you have to take it. Therefore, there is no way of whether it is working or not. You cannot conclude anything. Therefore, he gives, uh, suppose you have a knee problem, he gives medicine for it. You have kidney problem, he gives medicine. He gives medicine for everything. He has a medicine for everything. In fact, he has a bag of round objects. And, uh, and he has one stone uh, thing. Uh, so, and uh, you ask for medicine, he takes uh, from the bag one thing and uh, rubs it and puts some water and he gives it to you. Some paste. Like that he has a paste for anything. Suppose you have broken uh, bone, bone is broken. Now, when bone is broken, you have to set the bone. It is not about giving a medicine. You have to set the bone. Means the two pieces must face each other without any gap in between, so that they will grow again. And the gap will be filled by the, by the body's healing mechanism. They do that whatever way they do, but then he says he has a medicine which can set the bone, like the Shelya Akarani, some name he used to it and used the medicine. He has a medicine for everything. And the medicine is not supposed to act in a day or a week. Therefore, there is no way of verifying at least any soon. Similarly, the ritualist, I don't know whether I gave the right example, the ritualist has a solution for anything and everything. Suppose uh, the person is quarreling with his wife, he has a ritual to separate that. Suppose the person has two wives and they are quarreling among them, then he has another ritual to separate that situation. Suppose you have an enemy in a court, he has a ritual for that uh, court uh, winning. Suppose there, are, uh, there is a cricket match between India and Pakistan, they do a ritual for India's win. They have even Pakistan women, that is a different matter, but they do their ritual. They have a ritual for everything. Suppose you have prostate problem, they have a ritual for that. <laughs> Suppose you have acid reflux, he has a ritual for that. He has a ritual for anything and everything. Suppose the boy is not getting married, he has a ritual for that. The girl is not getting married, he has a different ritual. Uh, but he is not interested in marriage, how to create interest in marriage, there is a ritual for that. And the boy loves another woman and another young girl, but she is not responding. There is a ritual for that. He has a ritual for anything. Now the problem is, uh, the stone idol, it seems to be very insentient. And how to make it God who is sentient? He has a ritual for that. Now you got the point. I took my time to build a case. So, therefore, the priestcraft, in the process of priestcraft, a ritual has come out to put sentience into the stone image. Arrival. 
And the name of the ritual is Prana Pratishtha. Put life into that. So this way, the, the life and the sentience and the awareness, they are considered godly elements. And if they are in small measure, that is Jiva, and if they are in full measure, that is Ishvara. And what is small and what is full, that is again subjective. Okay. Once a child went to Vishakhapatnam, I was in Hyderabad, the child went to Vishakhapatnam by Godavari Express. It's a prestigious express, always late, that is a different matter. So, but it is a prestigious express and he went to Vishakhapatnam, first time from Hyderabad. Because people of Hyderabad don't know the ocean. ocean. They are landlocked people, you know, they don't know the ocean. Because uh, the Nawab, he felt that this ocean is a nuisance. It comes, it creates a tempest and hurricanes all the time. And at the time there will be terrific rain and floods and all that. Therefore he did not want the ocean, the Nawab. He has driven away the ocean to support the ships. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore we remain without ocean and a landlock. Therefore we don't know ocean. What is this ocean? We don't know. People from Himachal Pradesh also don't know what is ocean. So this, this family went to Vishakhapatnam. And so they returned. I asked the boy, did you see the ocean? He said, yes. It must be very big, right? Yes, this is this big. That is what he said. Therefore, his idea of big is relative. It is not absolute. Elder's idea, you know how you tell me how big is the ocean? You tell me, do you know how big is the ocean? You say it is very big. So you have an idea of big, which is relative to you. So this big is not absolute, it is relative only. Relative to whom? Relative to Jiva. It is not that the big one comes and tells I am big. It is the small one who tells I am small and he is big. Did you notice that? The big one doesn't accept that I am big. Kya baat hai? He doesn't accept. It is the small one who asserts that I am small and God is big. Therefore this Vaishadhi, big Vaisha is Ishvara, small Vaisha is Jiva, has to be correctly appreciated. It is not Ishvara's Bhradhi Prachaya about big and Jiva's Bhradhi Prachaya about small. It is not so. Ishvara doesn't have any Bhradhi Prachaya. Wrong notion. In both cases the notion is that of Jiva only and it is based on Bhrāti, delusion. You got the point? Therefore, the person takes himself to be small and having uh, taken oneself to be small, he projects a big and calls the big God. Now you tell me whether Jiva came from God or uh, God came from Jiva? God. God came from Jiva. God made man in his image, but first man makes God in his image and then that God makes man in his image. Because otherwise this Bhranti Pratyaya, one part of it should belong to God and another part should belong to Jiva. It is not so. Both parts belong to Jiva. Okay? Therefore, this uh, distinction or division, not distinction, division between Jiva and Ishvara is entirely based on the delusional thinking of this person called Jiva. So, you see, what happens is uh, Jiva has worldly experiences. And uh, these worldly experiences are assessed are estimated based upon the false sense of the self. I was born, I am going to die, I am a little knowing, with a little power. Like that you have a false assessment of yourself and once you have a false assessment of yourself, your world experiences are colored by that false notion of yourself. 
and therefore you feel that you know a little and you have a little power. So, most unfortunately, the greatest scholar, you ask him, do you know your true self? He will say no. The biggest businessman, successful businessman, the, the richest businessman, you ask him, do you know the true self? He will say no. Therefore, people, they create a jiva hood, a status of being jiva, based on the experiences of the world of the false self. First you identify with the false self and that false self has a variety of experiences based on the false notion and out of those experiences you create a jiva. Okay? I create a division between jiva and ishvara. Therefore, the, the assessment of oneself and the ideas about the God that people have divisive ideas, God is different from myself, etc. They are entirely built upon the very flimsy foundation of taking oneself to be the false self, not the true self, so the small self. Hence the smallness comes to the self by mistake, that is the Vesha, I will explain it. And therefore, out of this false assessment of oneself comes a projection of a different uh, God, different from oneself, that is how it comes. Therefore, this division has no basis in truth. So, you see, what is this false assessment of oneself? So, I am small and short-lived. That is the false assessment. Short-lived means mortal. I am small, less knowledgeable, less powerful, and also immortal. Whereas God is immortal, all-knowing, and all-powerful. This is how you say. Now, why you say you are small? Because look at me. Come on, that is the false assessment. Look at me, nobody can look at you. They can only look at your body, and body is small. So here the question is, the smallness of the body applies to you or not? If the smallness of the body applies to you, then you cannot be one with the God. That is ruled out. And then uh, the limitedness, the limitation of time, it applies to the mind. Your mind is limited. Your mind is caught between the past and the future. The limited past and the limited future. And the mind is in the present. You see, the present is called Vartamana. Varta means moving. Vritti Vartane. Vritti, you know, that is the Dhatu. Therefore, it is moving in the present and it projects a future and it imagines a past. That is the mind. Therefore, the past is called Bhuta, the future is called Bhavishyat, and the present in which the mind is moving, the present is called Vartamana. So Bhuta, Vartamana, Bhavishyat. Vartamana is movement. But uh, Vidyamana is different. Vartamana is different, Vidyamana is different. Mind is not Vidyamana, mind is Vartamana. Atma is Vidyamana. Sat it is. Therefore, the smallness is that of the mind, because it is caught between the bhuta, the past, the bhavishyat, the future, and it is in the vartamana, in the present. That is not you, that is the mind. Therefore, the smallness is that of the mind, but it is, it is superimposed upon the vidyamana, which is the sat, that is the real, true self. Therefore, the limitation of the body is superimposed, therefore the self appears to be mortal, and the limitation of the mind, which is time, is superimposed, therefore the, uh, the self appears to have birth and death. Birth in the past, death in the future, and shoka sorrow in the present. Or you know, or 
सप्तमाद क्रम क्रम विद्यमान वेद सत्तायातु वृति वक्त में वृद्धि धातु देर फॉर दी वैशा वट इज दैशा दी स्मॉलनेस ऑफ द बॉडी दी लिमिटेशन ऑफ द बॉडी दी मॉर्टालिटी ऑफ द बॉडी अंड द टाइम लिमिटेशन ऑफ द माइंड दैट इज दैट इज दी वैशा दट वैशा इज रॉन्गली एट्रीब्यूटेड टू द चैतन्य दट इज दी वैशा and uh, therefore now the false self is in place this false self projects a big self other than itself therefore when the small smallness of the self is false the bigness of the other self is equally false if you dismiss this falsehood that falsehood also will be dismissed then there is no reason to say the two are different here there is one small critical point that we have to notice you don't ask me to prove ishwara and jiva are separate you don't ask me to prove uh, sorry you don't ask me to prove that they are one you prove that they are separate you prove why them If you fail to prove Vaitam, what remains is Advaita. It is called Advaita Siddhi. Advaita Siddhi, accomplishing Advaita, is not by trying to prove the oneness, because it is not oneness. You say how Advaita Siddhi happens, how Advaita gets accomplished. We ask the Advaiti, you prove the Advaita. You it is your burden to prove the Advaita. See the burden of proving the criminality in a criminal case is on the defendant, the prosecutor, on behalf of the state, not defendant. Sorry, the prosecutor. The burden of proving the criminality is on the prosecutor. If the prosecutor fails to prove the criminality, then the defendant becomes go, goes to scot free. Therefore, it is for the Dvaiti to prove the separation. The Dvaiti has to prove separation. In case the Dvaiti fails to prove the separation, what remains is Advaita. Therefore, the burden of proving oneness is not on the Dvaiti. The burden of proving the separation is on the Dvaiti. That's why it is Advaita. It is not monism. It is non-dualism. Now you got the point. Therefore, it is for the Dvaiti to prove the division between Ishvara and Jiva. You prove the division. Why Ishvara and Jiva are different? To prove, Jiva is mortal. How can you say Jiva is mortal? Jiva is not mortal. What is Jiva? The Chaitanya expressing in the physical body is the Jiva, right? Physical body is mortal. Because the physical body is mortal, Chaitanya doesn't become mortal. The element is fused, not electricity is fused. Therefore, the mortality of the physical body you don't apply to Chaitanya. Then the smallness of the body in space, space limitation of the body, doesn't apply to Chaitanya. Okay. And the time limitation of the mind doesn't apply to Chaitanya. And the intellect's knowledge, small or big, that doesn't apply to Chaitanya. Intellect has limited knowledge. Chaitanya has infinite potential. Right? Chaitanya doesn't have knowledge. Chaitanya has potential. It can know anything. Anything can shine in it. Anything and everything can shine in the light of awareness. What shines it depends upon the intellect. Not on the. It is like the project of light. Whatever be the seen, the project of light will show. The seen is not in the project of light. The seen is in the filament. Therefore, if the seen is good, the project of light doesn't become good. If the seen is bad, the project of light doesn't become bad. The goodness and badness are in the film only, not in the light. 
Therefore, small knowledge or big knowledge is in the intellect only. It is not in the light of awareness. And uh, therefore, the smallness of the intellect, of the bigness of the intellect, not in terms of knowledge, you cannot put it upon the Chaitanya. There is no reason to make Chaitanya, to divide Chaitanya into small and big. Small and big applies to only the intellect. Okay? Then power. The indriyas and the body have the power. The power could be small, it could be big. That doesn't apply to the Chaitanya. Chaitanya is like electricity. Electricity is neither big nor small. The, 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 the uh, descriptions do not apply to electricity. Whatever be the description doesn't apply to electricity in real terms. Small, big, etc. Then the measurements of electricity that people come up with, like wattage, voltage, ampere, they do not apply to electricity. They are become relevant only in the context of a gadget. It is 20 volt gadget means it is not that electricity is essentially 20 volt. 20 volt is because of the gadget only, not because of essentially electricity being the voltage. Therefore, electricity should not be described in terms of measurements, ampere, voltage, this and that. They do not apply to the electricity essentially or intrinsically. These measurements become relevant only in the context of electricity expressing in a gadget. Measurements apply to the gadget, not to the electricity. Body-mind is the gadget. All the descriptions that you give about Chaitanya are false because they belong to the body mind, wrongly attributed to the Chaitanya. And if you dismiss all the attributes of the body mind as they are put on or superimposed upon the Chaitanya, then Chaitanya shines in all its glory. It is neither small nor big. It is neither Jiva nor Ishvara. It is what it is. That's why the Chaitanya is called Brahma. Chaitanya is not called Ishvara. Chaitanya associated with an Upadhi becomes Ishvara. And the Upadhi is always false. The bigness is the Upadhi. And which is always false. Which is always relative and therefore unreal. The relative, bigness is relative to smallness. Okay? Tell me how east is there? How big is the east, you tell me? You cannot tell. How big is the west, you tell me? You cannot tell. How big is this flask, you can tell. How big is this house, you can tell. Therefore, the bigness doesn't belong to space. It is relative. Smallness doesn't belong to space. It is again relative. Not only bigness is relative, but also smallness is relative. Therefore, you look at the Chaitanya and put one kind of Vesha attire, it becomes Jiva, as though. It appears to be, it appears as Jiva. And put a different attire, it, become, it appears as Ishvara. And this attire is false. It is not real. But you take it as real due to delusion. That is the verse. Okay? Therefore, you see, you look at it like this. What you call Ishvara is Satchidananda. Satchidananda. Yesterday we have seen Satchidananda. It is continuation of that only. And uh, the Adhyana or the Maya, it doesn't obscure Sat. Therefore you feel I am. You never feel I am not. You never uh, have a doubt, am I or am I not? Okay? Na kaschit naham tipratiyat. Shankara says, there is nobody in this creation who feels I am not. Or sandeha, am I or am I not? Nobody feels like that. That means that the sat is not obscured in anybody. Every living being is issue, not only humans, not only humans, animals, you're a small creature. 
it is a struggling to find a way, a small creature, right? Why so? Because it knows that it exists. A small creature knows that it exists. It may not know much more, right? but that much it knows. Therefore, Sat is not obscured by Maya, but Chit is obscured. That's why you feel, I know a little. Chit is obscured by Maya, I know a little. Because you know a little, God knows a lot. Why God knows a lot? Because you know a little. Therefore, now two Bhranti Prachayas, I know a little and God knows a lot. Okay? Two Bhranti Prachayas. And then, man, uh, so, uh, like this, the, the unbent apply, the obscure sound I am samsari dukhi, occasionally sukhi, as God is Ananda Swarupa. Therefore, Maya has obscured chitta and Ananda. It did not obscure satan. Some people ask a question about this that is covered now, okay? Therefore, as the Maya obscures Sat, Maya doesn't obscure Sat, but obscures Chit and Ananda, therefore it appears as though the Sat is many, Sat is divided. Because it creates particulars in Chit and Ananda. As it obscures Chit and Ananda, great Chit, small Chit, great Ananda, little Ananda, this kind of particulars are created in Chit and Ananda. That's why nobody says, I am small existence, God is a big existence, nobody says that. People say, I am and God is, but I know little, God knows a lot. Therefore, the chit is the, creates particulars. Why particulars are created out of chit? Because of obscuring of chit by maya. Then, the Vishnu is always happy, only we are unhappy people, and occasionally we are happy, whereas Vishnu is always happy. So the Ananda, your Ananda is obscure, therefore you feel unhappy, and therefore you project Vishnu as always happy. Puranic <coughs> stories tell that Vishnu is also occasionally unhappy. Because uh, however uh, you deny, you cannot avoid it. Because uh, you make Vishnu all happy and keep yourself as unhappy, some of this unhappiness uh, uh, it uh, goes and uh, rubs to Vishnu also. And therefore, the Vishnu becomes occasionally unhappy. You are Vishnu. This is all because of Maya obscuring uh, the Chitta Nanda, not obscuring Sati. Suppose Sati is also obscured, then there will be nobody to create a particular. Okay. So, therefore, Sat is the foundation, Adhara, Sat is the foundation, and there are no particulars in Sat. All particulars come from Chitta Nanda only, because Chitta Nanda are obscured by Maya. And because you create a particular sort of Chitta Nanda due to Maya, Maya is a jnana. And then superimpose them on the Sat and we divide the Sat as Jiva and Ishvara. Jiva Asti, Ishvara Asti. Therefore, from this obscuration or obscuring of Maya proceeds the particular called Jiva, who is a veiled by ignorance, therefore identifies with the physical body, creating a Vesha for himself. So this is how the division is happening. Then, why there is ignorance? Because you do not investigate the true self. You take it for granted. My attire is small, you take it for granted. You do not investigate the true self. Is it small? Where from this smallness is coming? You do not investigate. Suppose you are sad. Why you are sad? Are you intrinsically sad? Or intrinsically happiness? You have to investigate. Suppose you are sad, you should continue to be sad in deep sleep. When you are happy, you should be happy in deep sleep. When you are sad, you should be sad in deep sleep. But what is your experience? 
whatever you be in waking state, sad or happy, you remain happy in the deep sleep state. Therefore, this particular son in the waking state only, they are not there in the deep sleep state. In deep sleep, all are uniformly happy. Some are more happy, some are less happy, there is no such thing. All are uniformly happy, and that happiness cannot be measured. The happiness of ice cream, etc., can be measured, but not the happiness of deep sleep. You cannot measure it, you cannot describe it. It is uniform for all people. And if that is what you are, the particulars in ananda that are created in the waking state are due to ignorance. And knowledge particulars created in the waking state are also due to ignorance. And this ignorance is in place because you do not investigate the self. Okay? You see, you look at yourself, you take yourself to be jiva, a particular person. If you carefully look at yourself closely, I say closely, the other day also I was explaining, you have to look closely. People do not look closely. They look peripheral. They do not look closely. They go to temple. They do not look closely. They put all kinds of flowers and malas and dresses in them. The idol is already dressed. The idol is already dressed, but the priest craft, uh, if it is already dressed, then you don't need a dress. Then uh, they need not bring in new clothes every day. In India, the idol is uh, decorated with a new sari every day, and that sari is uh, auctioned every day. It is a very commerce thing it is. Every day new silk sari should come. Not cotton sari. Indian weather demands cotton sari. Silk sari should be, doesn't fit into Indian weather. But people are crazy. Every day a new silk sari comes from a country costing 20,000 rupees. And then next day it is auctioned. And in the auction, while purchasing somebody gets, a, somebody takes, a, somebody gets a, a share while purchasing. And while auctioning somebody gets a share. And while decorating somebody gets a share, there are commissions at every stage. Sometimes I feel the government office corruption has its origin in the religious practices. Hmm? These are all difficult things to say. Therefore, uh, you uh, so, you look closely. You say, I look at God. You don't look at God closely. You don't look closely. You look uh, very superficially. Some decorations are made, flowers are big, big. Are, um, idol is this much, but uh, the mala is this much, disproportionate. Hmm? Idol is this much and the kiritam is this much, very disproportionate. Nobody sees in the so-called God. They see only the Vesha. All the uh, outer uh, trappings only they see. They don't see the God. And uh, therefore, uh, so you look closely. Why do you look in a, such a uh, such a loose way? You look closely. You say yourself to be Jiva. You look closely at yourself, you will understand if you look closely at yourself that you are all knowledge. How many forms you know per day? Seeing is knowing. How many forms you know per day? How many sounds you know per day? How many tastes you know? Suppose you, you don't know the forms of Japan. No, you go to Japan, you don't know the forms of Japan. Hmm? You don't know the sounds of Russia. Go to Russia, you will know the sounds of Russia. No, no, Alaska forms I don't know. Go to Alaska, you will know the forms of Alaska. Means you have the potential to know infinite forms, to know infinite sounds. It's only a matter of creating a situation. So, gadget should be there. The potential is there. 
If gadget is not there, means you are not standing in Alaska, those forms you don't see that sun. It's not that God knows Alaska, but you don't know Alaska, it is not like that. Therefore, you have the potential to know all forms, all sounds, all tastes, all colors. You are all way. Look at yourself closely. Are you not all way? Are you not knowing all? You wake up and know all? Therefore, you do not look at yourself closely. The under you wrongly identify with the gross body, that vesha, because you do not look at yourself closely, there is this wrong identification with the gross body, and therefore you take yourself to be small. And then you project a god, big, big god, so uh, uh, in relation to your smallness. The more smaller, smaller you are, Bigger is the thought. Okay? Someone is satisfied by worshipping a Hanuman uh, in a locket. But someone else wants 112 feet of Hanuman. Why? It is all the imagination of an ignorant mind. Therefore, uh, this uh, so, when uh, you take the chitta, the pure awareness, and put all the limitations of the body-mind upon it, that results in jiva. And you take away the limitations, the pure chitta remains. I'm not saying God remains, the pure chitta remains. And then take away the limitations, the, the particulars that you have superimposed on God, that He is all-knowing, etc. You see, after all, uh, Jesus Christ was the God, Son of God. He was another human being only, like you and me. Rama was uh, indeed God Himself, God incarnate. He was also another human being like you and me. Krishna was the God incarnate. He was another human being like you and me. Buddha was God, Buddha Bhagavan. He is another human being like you and me. What is your problem? <laughs> Therefore, uh, you take uh, the Vesha and superimpose it on the Chitta and therefore it appears to be small. And out of that uh, small, that notion, false notion of smallness, you create a God of God big. You, you look at the attributes of God, look at the attributes of God. God wears uh, costly silk clothing. Why? You wear some silly, cheap clothing. That's why God wears costly silk clothing. Right? There is a Mahatma back in India. Somebody asked him, why do you want so much gold for God? Why do you want so much gold? He is collecting 110 kg gold. Why do you want so much gold? He said, it is not for me, it is for God. Then why God wants so much, why so much gold from God? He says, God is great. We are silly people. We may keep copper, uh, we can decorate with copper, but God cannot decorate with uh, copper. God has to be decorated with uh, gold. That is the explanation he gives. And all people clap. People clapping is another funny thing. It is. They clap, thereby making it a loudly clear that they are all ignoramuses. That's why they are clapping. Therefore, this is how the Vesha is creating a division between Ishwar, Ishwara and the Jiva. You see, I will tell two things and conclude today's discussion. And the verse will finish tomorrow, okay, in another class. One king was going, this was a small anecdote by a great Mahatma. King was going in a palanquin, in a golden palanquin. And the three people carry in the front and three in the back. And there is one leader of these six people, that is the seventh. He has a, a stick with a golden uh, sounding uh, ring and all that, and he walks in the front. And he hits, mm, 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 like that. And these people merge the step with that hit, so that the king will be moving without any uh, disturbance. He will be moving perfectly in a line. The palanquin will be moving. 
he will not be moving at all. He will be, he will not be disturbed. If somebody makes a wrong step, he misses the synchronization, then the king will feel like that. And then he will ask, Are you How are you getting your what? And he questions the front person who is walking with that golden stick. The king is going. And uh, one army unit, a small uh, half a dozen personal bodyguard in the front and the back from horses, it is all going uh, into ratch. There was an agricultural field on the side, and uh, the farmer is uh, tilling the land. He, they don't keep upper cloth because it is sweat and mud and all that. He wears a, a loin cloth kind of thing around the waist and he is tilling the land. The king was amused to see the farmer and he asked, hey, stop the palanquin. So they put it down. The king came out of the palanquin and walked towards the field. He himself, he asked the people to stay there because he doesn't want to disturb the farmer. He felt some goodwill towards him. He walked on that uh, um, separate, and that um, intermediate separating part will be there a bit high. On that he walked. And then I, he stopped the tilling and looked at the king. He was uh, astonished why king is standing there. Of course he could see king was going in the palanquin, but now he came here. Then Maharaj Namaskar like that, he said, the king said, you come here and ask them, who are you? I am a poor farmer, sir. He puts poor before that. <laughs> he is not a poor farmer, he is a farmer. But he puts poor to be on the safe side. Like we go to the temple, Papa Hum, Papa Karma. <laughs> you never know, you know. Better. <laughs> Better to be on the safe side. Let me err on the safe side. Instead of erring on the wrong side. So similarly, I am a fool for him. He doesn't want to, he, he is very clever. Uh, and uh, then who am I? You are the great king. He is not the great king. He is a Javindar. Means one district king he is. India was ruled by 480 kings before the British left. And uh, Sardar Patel brought all of them together. So he is not the great king. He is a pity king. But he says you are a great king. This is the Bhakta, I tell you. Huh? Erring on the right side. Then the king said, Oh, you are a poor farmer and I am a great king? Yes. Do one thing, you come and stand by my side. And then he removed his golden angi, his crown and other things, and he also put, tied his dhoti to the waist, and he stood by the farmer, removing all those things. Now you tell me, who are you and who am I? Then the farmer said, are you sure, sir? Yes, you tell me. We both are human beings. That is what he told me. That is the truth. So, you take away all this priestcraft created terminology from your consciousness that you are a puppy, you are a useless person, you are a desiring person, you are an insecure person. All this nonsense you take out. And uh, Abide at the pure awareness, absolute. Okay? Then you do not feel the separation from the Godhead, which also happens to be the pure awareness, absolute. As a practical proof of this, I ask you a question. I conclude with this question. And some more we will discuss in the next class. The question is, did you ever think of a God other than yourself when you are entirely desireless and fearless? No. When you are uh, altogether desireless and fearless, a God other than you doesn't cross your consciousness. You know that? A God other than you crosses your consciousness only when you experience some insufficiency in you, something lacking in you. And more importantly, some insecurity in you. You are somehow insecure and insufficient. 
in a small way or a big way. You, you feel it. And then you think of a God. You feel, oh, the money that I have may be less. Okay, let me worship God. Goddess Lakshmi comes to your consciousness. Oh, my knowledge is inadequate. Goddess Saraswati comes to your consciousness. My power is inadequate. Skanda comes to consciousness. You are afraid. Hanuman comes to your consciousness. Therefore, when you are utterly free from dissatisfaction and desire and insecurity and fear, you do not, uh, uh, that uh, the idea of a God separate from you does not cross your consciousness, does not occur to you. Means you have become one with the consciousness pure, which is the God, which is not the person, the desiring person, it is not. So you take yourself wrongly to be the desiring person, which you are not. You are the pure awareness, you are the Brahman, and you have to know that. That's why Shruti advises you Thakpamasi. That is what the Shruti says. He doesn't say, go and worship this God, go and worship that God. He doesn't say that. That is said by the Karmakanda, by the, by the priestly situation that is said like that. Not by the Upanishad. Therefore, Isha Jeeva Yoho Vaishadhi Bhida. Bhida division. Because of the false notion. Based on the attire between Ishvara and the Jiva. Okay. Still practically. Open the mouth.